Hello, everyone. I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another entry in our EHR telehealth series. And today we're talking with CareCloud, an operating division of MTBC. And we're here with Juan Molina. He's the division president at CareCloud. So welcome. I'm glad to have you here, Juan. Hey, John. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself and CareCloud and, of course, uh, MTBC. Sure. So, you know, a little bit about myself, as you mentioned, Juan Molina, divisional president, but haven't always been divisional president, really started with the company when we found the company um, almost 10 years ago, or, or actually now more than 10 years ago, and started in, in the sales and, and marketing area, and then moved into business development and into heading up strategy, and then most recently, chief operating officer, and now um, I get the good fortune and, and the honor of being president, divisional president here at CareCloud. And, you know, at CareCloud, our mission has always been the same. We want to just build incredible technology and tools that help power medical practices today. And we've gone to market, whether it's with pr uh, practice management software systems or electronic healthcare records or revenue cycle management services. And most recently, a couple of years ago, we launched our patient experience management platform. And in, in the most recent past, uh, really launching some telehealth solutions. Uh, to serve our customers. And on the MTBC side, um, MTBC is a, it's a healthcare information technology company uh, that acquired CareCloud earlier this year in 2020 that really provides a full suite of proprietary, you know, cloud-based solutions and related business services in both the ambulatory space and the health system space across the U.S. So it's really a great combination of these companies coming together to serve uh, practices all across the country. It's awesome. Uh, you know, it's so interesting for me because I don't know if you even know this story, but Albert was doing his rounds in San Francisco to to raise some money for CareCloud or what became ClearCloud. Yeah. And we bumped into each other in a coffee shop and just happened to run into each other and started talking. It was just just one of those uh, lightning in a bottle. But it's amazing to see how far you've come that. since. I do then. remember that story. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> incredible how far we've come since those very, very early days. Yeah. It's awesome. So, uh, you know, let's talk about telehealth. Uh, what was CareCloud's view of telehealth, let's say, pre-COVID-19, and how did COVID-19 really change your approach? You know, I would say that when I think about kind of telehealth, both pre-COVID and, and post-COVID, um, you know, on the MTBC side, we had really always kind of offered telehealth solution as part of the full suite of services. But what we saw on the telehealth side, we always believed that it was necessary and a great technology for practices. But when you look at the overall telehealth usage, at least across the care cloud base and, and the, the base that we can see, we were seeing that the numbers were, you know, infinitesimally small, right? It was like less than one tenth of one percent. Um, but as you can imagine, with the with with COVID and the necessity to adopt telehealth and, and really in the spike of the pandemic, we really started seeing practices adopting this and really trying to ensure that remote care was an essential part of their of their business. And we really leaned in, right? We uh, we started allocating different resources, including development resources, physician resources, educational resources, whether it was education on how to use the product itself or how to build and collect, how to set up your practice for telehealth, what were some best practices and the like. And you know, we we thought about, about it more so as just an integral part of, of the overall solution. And you know, as a feature set of the overall solution rather than just some some third party application is really kind of what how our thinking has evolved, I would say post post COVID to prior to COVID. Yeah, and, and so you know, what went into that choice? I mean, you kind of indicated that you, you think it needs to be integrated deeply, it sounds like. But why did you choose to develop your own in-house telehealth solution? I mean, I, I've done a number of interviews with CareCloud about your APIs and being able to enable third-party developers, and no doubt there are telehealth solutions out there. Why did you choose to do your own in-house telehealth solution? And, and really, how did you manage that across multiple EHR? Because, of course, you have CareCloud, and, and I think Talk yeah. EHR is the MTBC right. one. Yeah, so a couple a couple of ways to answer that question. So um, we were fortunate enough to leverage the same the same underlying platform technology that powers the Talk EHR solution for CareCloud Live. So we were, we were able to leverage that that technology set to bring CareCloud Live to market in really just a few weeks. But that doesn't mean that we still don't um, want to enable third party third party developers with our open APIs and our external APIs to allow them to connect to our platform. Our thinking was, you know, how do we bring a solution um, that is both elegant in design, simple to use, and, you know, very quick to onboard 
to our client base, right? We had some some uh, technology assets that were available to us, and we jumped on that to uh, to really drive um, you know the adoption of that for our customers. So for us, it's really you know a, a combination of whether you're using our telehealth platform or whether you're using a third-party telehealth platform. Is how do we enable providers and patients to to connect with each other and have this virtual care, right? And that's really kind of how our thinking has evolved throughout this time, and so much so, um, this really wasn't necessarily a revenue play for us, um, so to speak. It was more, you know, we've actually integrated as part of our services, and we see that that, that will continue to, to, uh, to happen um, as, as more and more adoption, or as the adoption continues to, to happen, you know, hopefully post-COVID and, and hopefully soon. Yeah, I think I think it's you know everyone says the uh, genie's out of the bottle or whatever <laughs> analogy you want. Uh, I was so. like, it's out of the bottle, but it may go uh, three quarters of the way back in. So I think we're still trying to figure out what's post COVID look like. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> I think, and I, yeah, and I, I just just to touch on that, I think the pa- patients have now experienced it um, themselves, where they probably were hesitant to experience it or, or hesitant before. Yeah. Um, I personally have had multiple um, um, telehealth appointments, one with my cardiologist as an example, and it was just an incredible experience. So I think that patients will continue to, to um, ask for it and adopt it. And I think, I think the, the physician community, the provider community, um, where it makes sense, will, will deploy uh, telehealth services um, to provide just better patient care or more convenient care for patients. Yeah, I did a discussion, I think yesterday, the day before, and a patient was on there and she said, I'm not going to let my doctor go back. <laughs> so I guess, yeah, that, yeah. that was an interesting uh, take from a patient. Uh, so I think it is interesting. You have your own solution, but I, I imagine you still, if if any of your customers want to integrate, you, you still have all the APIs available for them to integrate a third-party telehealth. Is that how you'd approach a third-party vendor as well? Absolutely. Look, I think I think a key to our to our strategy has always been, and and kind of a core belief of CareCloud has always been, and will remain that open wins, right? So we have our open our open API. So if clients want to integrate another telehealth solution, it's possible, right? We haven't limited any any third party telehealth vendors from accessing our APIs, whether it's appointments or patient APIs or what it, what they need. And you know our clients can go to the CareCloud Connect marketplace and you know see all of these different types of telehealth providers that are currently connected to CareCloud and, and are kind of our ecosystem of apps. Um, so yeah, there we will continue to support uh, those APIs and, and the usage of those, not just for telehealth, but for other sure. for other solutions. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you know, I think my next series after the EHR telehealth one is an EHR API one, but we'll see how yeah. that plays out. How, sure. how are you doing? On, we have a lot of thoughts about that. <laughs> yeah, you, I, you'd be one of the first I talked with. But, uh, you know, how are you doing with the EHR integration with your telehealth platform? How deeply is it integrated? Is it all just done through the scheduling, or, you know, how how are you approaching that integration? Are there still things you're working on that you want to integrate in the future? Yeah, there are definitely still things that we're working on. So it's it's single sign-on, right? So the way that, that that our customers experience it is, you know, single sign-on. There is no, you know, different kind of needs for different usernames and passwords. Um, and it's integrated with real-time scheduling, real-time, you know, kind of clinical templates that are associated to telehealth visits to minimize kind of, you know, workflow stressors. Um, we're we're working through a bunch of different innovations on the telehealth side. We'll We'll, uh, we're working and it's in development now around screen sharing. We've heard mm-hmm. clients ask us, you know, questions around, hey, can we actually see or do some screen sharing um, with the patient? And those are things that are under under development at the moment. And, you know, if you look at some of the other capabilities that we have, not just on the care cloud side, but on the MTBC side, you know, integrated, um, integrated um, real-time eligibility checks, you know, billing and claims tracking, with specific modifiers and the like. So a pretty robust telehealth experience. And one of the things that we've also done is that we've we've integrated that experience into our patient experience management application or what we call Breeze and what we've gone to market with Breeze. So for a patient, it's really an end user, a a full on experience for that end user. They don't, they're not having to move between different applications. Um, They can today use it on on a mobile browser if they'd like, but if they're in the Breeze application and they're finishing their check-in workflow, or maybe have to pay their copay, and they want to start a, um, they want to start an actual visit, um, they can do that visit right from the Breeze application. 
Yeah, I think that's great because Care Cloud has always been about integrating a bunch of solutions that are useful to a healthcare organization. I think that sets Care Cloud apart. We're not just trying to meet meaningful use, but we're trying to be useful to the business right. side of a practice. So I think that's really great. Uh, you know, you, you previewed a few of the features, but let's uh, kick that off now. What do we call our feature lightning round where awesome. we go through all the telehealth features and you can kind of talk about what do you have? What do you not have? What are you working on, et cetera. Now we've, we've refined this over the series, but but uh, every EHR vendor, it turns out, has a number of things, and you can just nod your head as I list them, or <laughs> unless you, there's sure. something that you don't have, like HIPAA compliant, audit logs. Of course, you have to have those automated patient reminders. You're doing that for in person. Now you're doing it virtually, patient education, and then patient payment. Of course, you've had to collect in the past, and now you are got to collect a telehealth visit. So right. all of those, I assume, you have? <laughs> That's correct, yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about some of the others that maybe are a little different and you can implement in different ways. So the first one is custom branding. Do you offer the custom branding to a practice? So sort of, right? So on the, on yes, on the MTBC telehealth side, um, okay. but on the CareCloud side for, for Breeze, one of the things that we do is that you're able to, you can't change the Breeze logo, but you, as the patient walks in, it says, welcome to, to Dr. John's practice, as an example. So um, I'll give us a, a sort of for that one. <laughs> gotcha. It depends on the situation. It will be interesting to see how that one evolves. How about uh, telehealth appointment scheduling? How are you approaching that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And 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 that's a beauty of of our open APIs, right? So the ability to to connect and and grab uh, those appointment slots in real time. So yes, we 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 have that. And do you allow self scheduling as well? Yes, um, it's a practice specific or practice enabled feature. So the practice right. has to turn that on. But yes, we enable that. Yeah, can you imagine if you didn't allow the practice to? <laughs> yeah. 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 You better have that feature. So that's awesome. And does, uh, let's see, next is uh, asynchronous text messaging with the patient. Yeah, yeah, the answer is yeah. So, you know, it's an MU3 point um, in the EHR. So, but yeah, we have that as well. Excellent. And how about a real time text during the visit? So that's more like the chat room, like you would do in Zoom or something like that. So is we don't that have available? that yet. That's in development. It's one of the things that, that we're looking at um, as well. Um, and it's probably a 2021 release for us, not sometime this year. Gotcha. I think it's interesting what that gets used for. I think for most of it is troubleshooting as much as anything. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe exactly. drop a link for them for some patient education or something. But it turns out it's useful for the troubleshooting more than anything else. Yeah. So that's great. How about a web-based or app-based? And you really could look at it from a clinician or a patient perspective. How are you doing it? Is it web? Is it app? Yeah, the patient can choose, right? So they can do it on the web. They can do it. They can do it on the mobile browser. Um, so it's it's really you know it's up to the patient. All right, but you don't have an app that they have to download. It's just the mobile no, web. No, we actually went away from that. Um, we had launched it originally that way, and what we found is that um, since we already had the Breeze application. Um, for the full on patient experience, we just embedded that into the Breeze workflow. Uh, but if you want to just do a straight uh, telehealth visit, you can do it on the mobile browser or on a regular browser for the patient. And are you doing where it's just a, a single link, one click to be able yep. to join the telehealth exactly. and all that? Yep. Excellent. And on the provider side, on the clinician side, uh, do they have both options or is it largely web browser? It's It's browser based, yeah, for the yeah. clinician. Interestingly enough, uh, I've found clinicians don't want the app <laughs> in most yeah. cases. Yep. They want the browser so they can multitask and get the EHR, et cetera. So mm -hmm. I think that's a good choice. How about the patient intake paper and collect paperwork and collecting that electronically, the HIPAA and privacy notice, et cetera? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing when we when we integrate that with Breeze, all of that is just part of those Breeze workflows. So yeah, the answer is yes. And then we also have it um, with uh, with our talk check-in solution, which is Talk EHR's version of that um, okay. on the MTBC side. Great. And how about the virtual waiting room? This one's been interesting. It seems like it's one that was underdeveloped, and now we all realize we better do some work. Where are you guys at on the virtual waiting room? It. That's great. And, and is it one where, you know, how does the workflow, because I mean, that this is really the question I think a lot of people are asking. Is it a virtual waiting room that any doctor could pick it up or is it a virtual waiting room per doctor? Can the MA go and grab them from the virtual waiting room? Uh, how, how are you it's approaching actually that? Today, it's, um, and if I'm not mistaken, but it's, it's um, provider specific because it's based on that particular provider's um, schedule. 
Yeah. I think it's going to be interesting to see what we do with that virtual waiting room. Do, do we start streaming video ads? You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of opportunity yeah. with the captive audience, uh, assuming they're, they're waiting, but anyway, a topic for another day. Uh, how about multilingual and remote interpretation? Um, so we do multilingual support in Breeze, as an example. So it's available in Espanol as well, or as my mom would want me to say, Espanol. Um, and uh, <laughs> so it is multilingual uh, supported for Breeze. Um, so the answer is yes. That's great. And, and remote interpretation, do you have that built in or a we way to connect We don't that? have that built in. Yeah. Okay. And how about team-based sessions where you could have multiple providers or, you know, in this series we've learned it could be provider, it could be a caregiver, could actually be a remote interpreter, right? That's how a lot of yeah, people have exactly solved the right. remote interpreter. So several of our customers um, kind of see patients in group, in group therapy sessions, right? So one okay. of the things that's in development, and I think you nailed the use case, right? One of the things that it's in development, you know, not only kind of the, the, the screen share that I had talked about or screen image capture, um, but also doing kind of team-based sessions is, is work that we're uh, looking at in development, probably for a 2021 uh, release. Gotcha. So you're still working on the screen share, the team-based, and uh, screen image capture. You know, I hold up my arm and show you my rash. Uh, you're still working yeah. on those? Yeah. Gotcha. How about the integrated clinical documentation? And, you know, I put in ambient clinical voice in this kind of, you know, how do you integrate the clinical documentation with the visit? Are you doing anything special there? Nothing special there. I mean, the, the physician is it's kind of um, civil chairing and, you know, there's no kind of amb ambient clinical voice technology yet that we've that we've enabled in the uh, in that um, telehealth console. But so they're going back and forth between the visit and, and the EHR and documenting that visit as they normally would a an in-person visit. Right. The only difference is the modality is just, you know, virtual. Sounds good. All right, and how about the uh, post-visit patient rating, which, yeah, I guess it's ratings for maybe reviews, surveys, the surveys yeah. may be internal, the others may be external. How are you approaching yeah. that? So again, um, through through our Breeze application, uh, we're able, we have a, what we call a checkout workflow. And in, in that checkout workflow, part of that is is reviews or surveys that can go out to the patient, they can answer uh, those reviews, so yes. Gotcha. And the telehealth specific billing and verification, you kind of already talked about that. It sounds like you yeah, have that integrated. We do. I mean, uh, given your founder, you better, right? Uh, he would he would roll over uh, <laughs> and be angry. So that makes sense. Are there any uh, unique telehealth features that you think really differentiate your solution? Um, you know, I think that when you when you look at telehealth as, as kind of a standalone, right, I think being able to instantiate a video call is pretty straightforward. Right. Um, and, and connecting that and and, you know, not to diminish the, the technology, but, you know, launching a video visit is is not that difficult. And I but I think what what is more important is the fact that you have a seamless integration with your practice management system or your EHR, whether it's, you know, patient data or demographic data, um, whether it's appointment data, but also creating a seamless experience in that in that patient flow. Right. So that integration that we did with uh, with Breeze, I think, is is a unique a differentiator for us where for that patient it's really a, a, a seamless experience for them from digital check-in to to telehealth console to check out so well, I do I, think I that think, that's a, a nicely a, a nice differentiator yeah well I, I think it's interesting what you said before that uh, you don't see this as a revenue driver because this is the question that I'm interested in and you know we'll find out in the next few years uh, you know how important is telehealth to driving revenue for an EHR vendor, or is it just another feature in the feature set? Sounds like you're taking it as kind of an important feature and right. it may be a differentiator, I think, as people choose to switch EHR, which could be interesting. But uh, you know, how many are gonna really make it into a profit center? I think that's gonna be interesting to watch. Yeah. What do you think about yeah. that? Yeah, and I think I think it will be interesting to watch. And I think our, our immediate our immediate thesis was how do we enable this for our customers, right? And let's let's focus on driving the best experience possible. And in, in our mind, at least as it stands today, you know, this is, like you said, an important feature for for um, an EHR or practice management software system. I think that as as practices or, or other healthcare companies start looking at, you know, the next generation solutions or technologies to replace some of their current systems, it'll be a big checkbox that they'll want to that they'll want to ensure. Um, is available, 
But to me, this is no different than how when, you know, billing systems were first created, the idea of automated, you know, advanced eligibility checking was not there. But over time, that became, you know, a an important feature set or, you know, rules engines became an important feature set. And when EHRs were first on the horizon, you know, the the ability to just create a clinical note was what was important, but then e-prescribing was was right. incredibly important and the like. And I think that as these systems continue to evolve, we will see um, telehealth be one of those important feature sets as well. Excellent. Well, I, I thank you so much for being part of our telehealth series and sharing all the insights. We've been here with Juan Molina, Division President at CareCloud and Operating Division of MTBC. If you want to find the rest of the EHR telehealth series, you can find it out at healthcareittoday.com. Thanks, Juan. Great. Thanks, John. Have a great day. Stay safe.